some examples of best practice you can enlighten us on? So you obviously work in this space. Um, can you give us some examples of organisations who've got kind of an integrated platform approach or they're going for an external best of breed product that has transformed their approach to cyber security? I think you know, the first thing to do is instead of just implementing technology for technology's sake, is first to understand the threat landscape. Mm. So, you know, as a CISO, um, an ex-military, so I'll use some military terminology, you know, I need to understand my battlefield. I need to understand where my assets are. Mm. And if I can't see where those assets are, it's very hard for me to defend them. So the first thing I do working with an organisation is really get a good grip and a good handle on what's where. Um, which are the key assets and where can I spend the most money on? Where do I need to spend all my resources? Mm. Really defending those bits that need defending most. So that's the first thing. Um, but even organisations who spent zillions and billions in technology per se have still been hacked. Yes. Mm -hmm. So yes. technology is not the answer by itself. It's much more, as Tom's alluded to, you know, it's a much more convoluted and uh, intrinsic landscape than just tech for tech's sake. Yeah. Technology is the answer and needs to be a part of the answer for sure because it's created the problem, mm -hmm. but it also has to be part of the solution. As humans, as we've been speaking about, are very fallible. So we've got to put in place stuff that, uh, that protects us. I think, I think the paradigm that, that we all use in our industry is, is you know, attack and defense, this kind of thing. And you know the, the, the archetypal castle and moats and high walls and drawbridges and all that kind of stuff. Um, the, the, the reality is that most organizations are living in, not a castle, but in a museum. And where uh, outsiders can come and go as 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 they please, um, because you know we've connected all our systems to to the internet. Mm. So um, so I think the paradigm, the model that we have in mind is uh, is is out of date. We need to think much more in terms of uh, a museum model where people can come and go. Yeah, we know the we have our crown jewels, our Mona Lisa, or whatever that we need to protect behind glass and and alarm systems. But a lot of the stuff that we have in our organisations can be viewed uh, openly by because that's what we want businesses to do. We want to collaborate with third parties and let our customers come in and and, uh, and interact. Um, so you know, changing the paradigm and the kind of the mental model that we have and communicating that in those relatively straightforward terms to board members um, will help to change the game. And then that then drives back to the strategy. Uh, question that then drives the kinds of technologies that we need to deploy um, that allow that openness while maintaining security. That's 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 a hard thing for the industry to shift around, but that, I think that's where we need to move towards. Well, you, you've you've used two verbs that, in some minds, would cancel each other out, which is you know allow openness whilst maintaining. So, the, so, so that's, that's the apparent the, contradiction, but, but it needn't be that, that that way. But I think you know if we if we have the mental model of building high walls. Then you know all the evidence points to the fact that you know those walls get breached at some point. So that's why we need to to, 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 to rethink. If you build a thirty foot wall, you'll sell a thirty one foot ladder. <laughs> <laughs>